Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the third video in Going 2D. Today we're going to be taking a look at making some code that will automatically adjust boundaries or colliders to fit the screen size of our user. So aspect ratio and all of that, we're going to take care of it. And also we're going to make our uh, players spawn with a certain distance from the edges. So as always, I've opened up Unity and we can just go ahead and get started. So uh, first off, let's actually create an empty game object. So go to game object, create empty or press control shift N. Uh, that's of course command shift N if you're on a Mac. Now let's rename this to underscore GM. That's for game master. And I like to uh, create a um, empty game object to handle all of the game setup, all of the score, uh, like um, uh, when when the player scores a point, uh, restarting and uh, going to menus, all that through a GM game object, um, which is just empty. That's just preference of mine. And the reason why I've put an underscore here is so that it will stay on top of the other objects in the hierarchy. So first off, let's zero out the position. That's just general good practice. And let's hit new script. And let's call this uh, game setup. So we can handle all of our setup logic in here. And let's hit create an ad, double click it, and it will open up in mono develop. So let's go ahead and get started here. Let me zoom in so you can see this a little better. And uh, actually, want, we want this uh, code for performance reasons to only be run in the uh, uh, start function. But just to show you how cool this actually is, uh, the calculations we're doing here, I'm just going to do it in the function update and then change it later. You can do the same. Uh, we could detect our camera. We're going to need our camera. We could detect that uh, once uh, in the function start by searching for it. But instead, let's just create a variable um, that's better on the computer. So let's call this not scene cam, actually. Let's just call this main cam. And it's going to be a type camera. Then down here, we're going to type var top wall. And this is going to store our top box collider, which we want to uh, access later. And also, we're going to store the bottom wall which is also going to be a type box collider 2D and the left wall. Let's do that one. And of course, you can exclude any of these if you want. If you don't want it in your game, it really depends on the game you're making. So here, right wall and then box collider 2D. OK, great. And now let's also make some variables for the two players when we want to access those. So player one of type transform and player two also of type transform. Great. So in the function update, let's make some space here. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to move each wall to its edge location. So we're just going to go ahead and do that now. First off, let's access the top wall dot size so we can change the size of the collider and uh, one thing you uh, should notice is that I will just do the top wall because there's a lot of typing and random numbers and such um, so I'll just do the top wall and then I'll copy paste the other walls and I'll of course leave them on the screen so you can fill in the numbers yourself but you can also download the script from brackies.com that's way easier and uh, I will, of course, explain everything. So top wall dot size equals new vector two, uh, which is basically just uh, stores two float numbers. The first of which is going to be our uh, screen to world point. And basically what this means is um, actually, let me just fill this out first. So uh, it's going to have something here. It's going to have something there. And then it's going to be comma, 1f, and then round it off. But um, we, if we just say, okay, we want this to be um, uh, basically as long as the uh, width of the screen, you would normally think, hmm, let's just do a screen dot width then. 
So it will be the size of the screen.width and then 1f. But the problem is that screen.width returns the width in pixels. And we want this to be in units. So basically we would have a collider that all of a sudden was 1920 if you're on full HD uh, units long. So it would scale all the way out here. And that's not really something we want. So an, an easy workaround is to use uh, screen to world point. And we can do this by accessing our camera and that will automatically uh, do this calculation for us. So let's type main cam dot screen to world point. I don't know why Mono Develop didn't suggest it there, but it's completely fine to do it. And then we are going to open up a bracket and inside this one, we are going to type new vector three and then open up another bracket. And here we're going to type screen dot width, just as we did before. And then we're going to type it by two, it's two F for float. And then we're just going to do comma, null F and zero F again. So um, basically, we only need this number, but it needs to be a vector three because that's how screen to world point works. Uh, but we only need this number. So that's the X value. So we are just going to do dot X. And that also means that the um, the zero F is here. Uh, they they don't really matter. The, the amount of those don't really matter. So I just saw I, I was missing a, a, a parenthesis there. So just close up the parentheses and then do dot X and then comma one F. Cool. And then we're going to do the uh, center. So top wall dot center equals new vector two. Open up a parenthesis and we want this to be zero F comma uh, because we want this to be centered in the width. And then on the height, we again want to access the screen height. So main cam dot screen to world point and this is going to be again a new vector three and it's going to be zero f comma screen oops screen dot height comma zero f close up the parentheses do dot y because we only want the um the screen dot height and it's x, y, and then z. So dot y. And then plus it by 0.5f. So right now you might be thinking, okay, what's going on here? What is what? And it can be really hard to keep track of. But basically, we are setting the center to be 0 on the uh, x-axis. So 0 um, horizontally. And vertically, we are setting it to be um, just by the edge. Um, but the reason why we are saying plus 0 0.5 is that it will be um, at the edge, but from the center of the collider. So we are just plusing with 0 0.5 because that's half the, um, the width of the collider or the height of the collider. And so it will only just be outside the screen. So now that this is working, let's just see if it is. So save it out and hopefully we don't get any errors. So we don't. And let's drag in the main camera. And now it's time to drag in the walls and we need to create those first. So let's just do control shift N to create an empty game object. Or again, command shift N if you're on a Mac. And let's call this um, top wall there. Hit the zero, zero, zero. And the position that's important, make sure all of your objects doing this are at zero, zero, zero. Drag it under the GM. So if something's not working, that's probably why. Uh, and then let's hit add component, physics 2D, box collider 2D, and there we go. And uh, you don't need to send any, set any of these values because the uh, script will do that for us. Uh, but just make sure that its trigger is not enabled. Now we can go ahead and duplicate this and rename it to bottom wall. Duplicate it again. Whoops, that didn't register. Bottom wall. 
Duplicate it again, that's Control D, Command D on Mac. Uh, left wall, and at last the right wall. There. Now select the GM object and we can drag in first off the top wall, then the bottom wall. We could also store these in an, uh, an array, which is basically just a list, but as long as it's a stationary number like this, I wouldn't worry about it. And then a right wall. Cool, so now when we go ahead and play our game, uh, we can see, I've turned on gizmos here just so you can see what's going on. These are the ones that are not set up yet, so this is the uh, left wall, right wall, and bottom wall. But up here we can just see, barely see a line uh, that is green, so that's uh, the collider. And if we go into the scene view, we can see that it, it's up here. Once we have the GM selected, we can see it up here. And if we then control click on the main camera, we can see that it aligns just with the edge of the camera. And uh, basically you have to watch out a little bit uh, when uh, checking if it's working this way, because if you just switch between the scene and game view, it might, uh, Unity might confuse things, especially with the left and right wall. So what you want to do is you just want to drag the game out, so undock it, then hit play, and now uh, and then hopefully it will show correctly. Yeah, see now it's it's all of a sudden much longer, and the main camera is only here. So the uh, Unity doesn't know exactly how to display this, but I promise you it does work. I've tested it out in in many resolutions, and the collider always snaps. The math is right. So cool, this is working. And the, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and add the other parts to this. So let's go ahead and add the bottom wall, the left wall, and the right wall. And I'm just going to copy this in here because this, this is a lot of values. It's the exact same code, just with uh, uh, by switching around on a few numbers. And um, and it, it works for, for them all. So go ahead and take a look at this now. Pause the video and write it down. Or go to brekkies.com. And uh, there you can download it as part of the assets pack. So uh, cool, let's continue. I'm just going to assume you've written all of this down. And let's uh, round it off by making the code for our player. So uh, let me just quickly find my reference script here. So there. Okay, cool. So I have it on my other monitor now, just so I don't make any errors. Uh, awesome. So let's first off access our player one and say dot position because it's his position we want to change. And it's basically only the x axis. So just say dot x. Now we're going to say that this is going to be equal to the main cam. And then again, our favorite function screen point to uh, screen to world point. There it is. And we're going to do new vector 3 and we want this to be um you can you can basically make a variable for this but i'm just going to set it to a fixed number uh i'd say uh, 75 is is pretty good and this is just the amount of pixels you want the um the player to be from the uh, the edge so i would say 75 pixels is just enough and then comma 0f comma 0f and uh, round off the two parentheses and say dot x because that's the value we want. And now we can just uh, round it off with a semicolon. And uh, let's just make the other player 2. Uh, so player 0, 2 dot position dot x equals main cam dot screen to world point. And open up new vector 3. And in here we're going to do screen dot width minus 75 f. So basically, uh, if we imagine that the um, the anchor point starts out here, over here on the left hand side, we are moving it with the screen dot width over to the other side and then subtracting 75. So it will be about here. So now that we have subtracted the 75, we can just say 0f, 0f, close off the 2 and say dot x because that's the value we want and round it off. 
So now when we hit save, everything should be working. We can head into Unity and we have errors. Yay, let's see what this is. Have I typed? Oh, I think I've typed something wrong. Yeah, these are scene cam. I want to change these to main cam. That's just, I called them scene cam for some reason the last time I did this. So main cam, main cam, main cam, main cam. There we go. Now we can go ahead and hit play. And some more errors. Okay, yeah, we need to assign the uh, players, of course. So now we can head over and select our GM object. We can drag in our player. Let's rename this guy to player 01. And uh, we can go ahead and duplicate him, rename him to 02. And let's just uh, drag him over here just to position him about where he's going to be. Um, I mean, our script is going to do this for us, but just so we know like how it would, uh, would go. And then let's change his controls from move up on W to the right uh, to using the arrow key. So let's see if we can find the arrow key. So up arrow for up and move down. That's going to be down arrow. Let's see if we can find it here. There it is, down arrow. So now they have different key bindings. Uh, what would have actually been a good idea was to make a prefab out of those. Yeah, okay, what the hell, let's just do it. So let's drag this guy down. Player one, duplicate him, move him over. Player two, and change the, change the key bindings here. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's a great idea to make prefab out of these kind of things because it's just gonna save you trouble later on when you've made a modification and all of a sudden you realize that you are the, uh, you are the player still way back. So move down and now we are ready to assign them to the GM. So player one, drag that in there, player two, dragging them there, hit play. <laughs> and now when we go into the scene, we can see the beautiful green lines here. We can select it and we can see it's made a triangle around. And also you will notice that our player has now snapped to the position. And uh, the cool thing is that if we now resize the game view, it will change in real time and adjust itself accordingly. And um, <clears throat> this is just a fancy feature to show you how it's working. We can still move up and down, move and up and down with the other player. So all of this is moving uh, or working. And uh, what we can do now is we can simply go back to the script and change this to function start so that the code will only be called once because um, there's really no re reason to, to update this unless you know the screen size would change. And I don't know why it would do that. So that was basically it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.